Good afternoon, my dear student. I am your Dr. Anana Lakshmi Sandeep, here to teach you what are the uses of screening. In the previous classes, we have studied what is screening, what are the differences between screening test and diagnostic test. So in today's class, we will study what are the actual uses of screening. So we will divide it into four parts depending on its uses and we will learn with examples. So come, let's proceed with the uses of screening. Uses of screening can be for case detection, for control of diseases, for research purpose and for educational purpose. So the four different uses of screening are case detection, control of diseases, research purpose and educational purpose. How does it go? Come let's see one by one. First let me tell you what are the points to be remembered under case detection as a use of screening. Case detection can be also called as prescriptive screening. Okay, So what, are, what is it actually? It is defined as the presumptive identification of unrecognized disease which does not arise from a patient request. As we have already studied in other classes of screening, we know that screening test is not actually the patient request. Instead it is from the investigator side. Now what does this mean? The presumptive identification of unrecognized disease which does not arise from a patient request. So you are going to a, a village or some city and you are selecting few patients randomly and you are applying some test over there to find out whether they have that particular disease or not. For example, your aim is to detect hypertension in uh, in and around Ujire. So what you do, you carry a spigma manometer with you, you pick few people in Ujire according to your study criteria and you keep screening them for uh, uh, hypertension by checking their BP. You may find few people who have got high BP. So this is going to help you to detect cases of uh, hypertension. So this is called as prescriptive screening. So, one more best example which I can give you for prescriptive screening is neonatal screening. Uh, I would consider neonatal hypothyroidism here. In our hospital, uh, at STM Hospital Ujre, the each and every child uh, which is born, that is every newborn child uh, will be uh, subjected to testing of TSH levels in the body of the newborn. Either we will send the cord blood if it is the first day sample or if we are sending on the third day or so we will send blood sample to the lab. They will check the TSH level and depending on the different range uh, of normal values of TSH depending on what type of test is done we declare whether the uh, child has got neonatal hypothyroidism or not. Similarly you can screen the newborn for different other diseases like CPK levels and many alkaptonuria or many other uh, neonatal disorders. So one best example which you can remember for neonatal screening which is an example for prescriptive screening is checking the TSH levels of newborn. So I would repeat case detection which is also called as prescriptive screening. It is defined as the presumptive identification of unrecognized disease which does not arise from a patient request. Example neonatal screening. Now let us go to the second use. What is the second use? Control of disease. Initial one was detection of case but now we are into control of disease. This is called as prospective screening. Let us see what it is now. Here the people are examined for the benefit of others. So screening of immigrants from infectious diseases like tuberculosis, corona to protect the home population can be an example for control of disease. You know during this corona pandemic time a patient who is having corona will be asked a question like who are all his contacts okay. So depending on that they will trace the contacts and, and even they are screened to uh, they are screened to find out whether they have got corona or not. This type of screening for corona is the best example for prospective screening nothing but control of disease. So another example which I can give you is screening 
for HIV and sexually transmitted infection or diseases. So think that you have a HIV patient with you, you will counsel him, you will do contact tracing of him or her and you will uh, identify the contacts and you will uh, you do check HIV or syphilis or gonorrhea or any other sexually transmitted infection in the contacts of the patient as well. So this is an example for control of disease. So you are doing screening here in order to control the disease. This is what is called as prospective screening. One more important point to be remembered under control of disease as a use of screening test is screening program may by leading to early diagnosis permit more effective treatment and reduce the spread of infectious disease and mortality. So why you have to do the screening test? Why can't you wait for the patient to develop signs, symptoms? Let him come on his own and you do some diagnostic test. Is that is that a way? Definitely no. Why? Because if you apply a screening test for apparently healthy individual, if he has got some disease which you are screening for and you are able to pick it up, it is easy for you to treat. You can treat it early, you can um, sometimes you can cure it also. If you are not able to cure it, you can uh, limit the spread of the disease to others and also you can limit the disease from going into complications and death. So so screening is actually an opportunity for you to identify dangerous diseases in the community where you can apply the treatment in early why because you are diagnosing it early so this is all about control of disease or prospective screening first one was case detection second one is control of disease now let me go to the third one that is it is used for research purposes so to know the history of many chronic disease like cancer hypertension you can do screening test research keeps on going so every day you find a new thing in hypertension cancer etc maybe in the treatment aspect or its epidemiological aspect to find what's new you have to apply screening test Screening may aid in obtaining more basic knowledge about the natural history of such diseases. You know what is natural history? There is agent host environment interaction, then there is a um, pre-pathogenesis stage and pathogenesis stage and you know what, what is there in whole set of natural health, uh, natural history of disease which we have taught in the previous lectures and that may help in knowing the basic knowledge of these natural history of such diseases. Initial screening provides a prevalence estimate and subsequent screening provides an incidence figure as well. So the last use is educational opportunities. So screening program, they help in acquisition of information of public health relevance and providing opportunities for creating public awareness. So basically it can be a tool for health education as well. So you can also use it to educate health professionals as well, that is service providers as well. So these are the four uses of screening. So let me just summarize in a minute. The four uses of screening are case detection, which is called as prescriptive screening. Uh, for example, neonatal uh, screening for TSH levels, uh, high, high TSH levels, control of diseases, example, during pandemics, corona screening, then it is also called as uh, prospective screening, research purposes, as I have told you, to study more in detail about hypertension. Lastly, educational purpose to educate the healthcare providers and also the public more about a particular disease. So these are the uses of screening. Thank you.